praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of the universe and all within. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is, as we might say, very, very near. In fact, by next week, this time, we may be fasting or at least be in the day before Ramadan. And as promised, I want to start talking about Ramadan and the related issues. But the first thing I want to start with is fasting. What is fasting? The word saum or siyam, as we know, is the Arabic term for fasting. In the Arabic language, the word fasting or saum means to restrain or to hold back or to refrain from. So restraining yourself from anything is considered saum, fasting. There are people in some religions who abstain they fast, and their fast is, is abstaining from salted food, for example. They eat only sweet. Or they don't eat any meat for the day, or a couple of days. This is a type, this is a type of fasting because they're refraining from uh, certain things. In fact, even if you refrain from speaking, it is considered a fasting at least from the linguistic perspective, which means to re refrain from doing something. In fact, it was used, the word saum was used in the Quran to refer to refraining from speaking. In the story of Maryam alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam in the Quran, in Surah Maryam, this word saum is used to refer to not speaking. When Maryam alayhi salam, as is mentioned in this surah, surah uh, Maryam, when she became pregnant, it was of course a shock to her. And when she finally gave birth, or during the process of giving birth, from the pain and so on she experienced, as Allah says, فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَادُ إِلَىٰ جِزْعِ النَّخْلَ That the, the, the pains of labor, of giving birth, brought her to the, the, the a dead palm tree. قَالَتْ يَا لَيْتَنِي مِتُّ قَبْلَ هَذَا She said, I wish I had died before this. وَكُنْتُ نَسْيًا مَنْسِيًّا And that I would have been something that is unknown and forgotten. Perhaps the pain that she experienced made her feel that way. And maybe she was also thinking of, but what happens next? Right? She's a pious lady who was not married, never interacted with, uh, with men per se. In fact, she was known as someone who secluded herself in devotion to God Almighty. So perhaps she was also worried about, well, now I have this baby, you know, how am I going to face the people? So when she made this statement about wishing that she had died before all of this and so on, Allah says, فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا And he and the Mufassirun have differed whether it's the baby, Jesus alayhi salam, or an angel, from under her said to her, أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي Don't be sad. قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَّ why? Because your Lord has provided for you a stream of water. You, you have water to drink. And shake the date palm tree. Fresh dates will fall for you to eat. So eat and drink and be happy. فَإِمَّا تَرَيِنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا Here is the word sawm. And she's instructed 
if you see any human being, فَإِمَّا تَرَيِنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا If you see any human being, don't speak. فَقُولِ Tell them, this is all you will say to them. إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا I have vowed to the beneficent Lord to fast. صَوْمًا But what is the sawm? The verse explains it. Allah says that she is to say to them, فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّ So I'm not going to speak to any human being. When she finally came to her people with the baby, and of course they accused her initially, their initial reaction was to accuse her of committing sin. She didn't speak. Because this is the fast, this is the song. To desist or to resist or to refrain from doing something particular, which here in this case is speaking. So instead she would point to the baby, فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ She pointed to the baby. She's silent. Of course, the people were, were wondering, they were astonished. How can we speak to a baby who is in the cradle, as they said? And then he spoke, of course. But this is the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected her and, and protected her name and her dignity. That if she had tried to explain to people what had happened, that an angel came and visited her and this happened, Chances are, few would believe her. So Allah the Exalted cleared her name in a miraculous manner. Because if she speaks, that's normal. An adult speaks. But for a child, an infant, who is days or even weeks old to speak, this is miraculous. It's nothing short of a miracle. And this should have indicated to people that her story about being pregnant without having any contact with any male is not, a, is not a fabrication, she's not lying. But of course that's another story, we can talk about that. The point in mentioning all of this is so that you and I can understand that the word saw in Arabic language means to refrain or to abstain from anything. If you make it a policy not to go to a particular store, let's say, all right, you decide you're never going to, I don't know, Eaton, the Eaton store or Sears or Bay or whatever. Then that act of refraining from going to those stores or that particular store is an act of fasting. It's so it's refraining from doing that. But in the Islamic perspective, fasting is not just the mere act of abstaining from. Remember, in the linguistic perspective, it's the mere <coughs> act of abstaining from anything. In the Islamic perspective, al hafiz ibn Hajar in discussing the, the, the word Sawm in his explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, he said that the fasting is defined as imsakun maksus, a special type of abstinence. Min shakhsin maksus, from a special person or specific individual. Not as anybody. Ala sifatin maksusa, with special conditions. Now, if we, were, if we were to put this into or translate this into, you know, language that you and I can understand, fasting basically, in the Islamic perspective, is abstaining from specific things, food, any kind of food and drink. Or, in a more general uh, way, anything that is orally imbibed through the, through the mouth. You know, if you drink a tablet while fasting, it will break the fast. So anything that goes down the throat, intentionally, deliberately, will break the fast. Even if you say it's not food or drink. Because most people might say, well, a tablet is not food or drink, right? So, the act of eating or drinking and engaging in, in sexual relations with the spouse. And of course, some scholars add to that, also abstaining from all forms of evil and immoral behavior. So fasting is abstinence from specific things. These specific things are food, drink, sexual relations, and number four, uh, immoral behavior, engaging in evil deeds or actions. He walked in Maksus within a specific time from dawn until sunset. Not sunrise. It is from dawn until sunset. 
Min shakhsin maqsus from a specific, specific or special person, that is the person who is Muslim. So a non-Muslim is not required to fast. Person has to be adult, not a child. Person has to be sane, not uh, having mental health issues. Because anyone who does not have complete uh, control of their mental faculties, they are not held responsible. Likewise, the child who, is, who has not hit puberty. And the person has to be a resident, not a traveler. Because a traveler, you have the permission of, not, of choosing not to fast. So this is what fasting is defined as in the Islamic perspective abstaining from eating, drinking, and sexual relations, and some scholars add evil deeds. From dawn until sunset, from the person who is Muslim, adult, and sane, and resident. Now, fasting, of course, has many virtues. And there are virtues that are general to fasting, and there are virtues that are specific to fasting in Ramadan or Ramadan. So first, I want to share with you some of the virtues of fasting in general. One of them is, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, is fasting is a, a very effective method and means of helping a person to control the sexual desire. And in this society, that is, as we say, a free society, one of the major problems that, you know, social problems that, that many people face is the lack of control when it comes to the sexual desire. So what has happened is people are unable to control the sexual desire. Many people have become addicted to watching porn, and among them even Muslims. Because you see these pictures all the time in your face. If you're not careful when you use your computer and you click anywhere, you know what happens. SubhanAllah. But fasting is an effective method of controlling the sexual desire. In this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ once was talking with a group of young men. And of course, for young people, especially once you're probably, I don't know, late teens, you know, maybe 18, 19, early 20s, the sexual desire is something that consumes the individual. So the Prophet spoke to them and he advised them. He said, Ya ma'ashara shabab, O group of young men, man istata'a min kumul ba'a fal yatazawwaj. Whoever of you can afford to should get married. Don't delay. All right, today, these days, people like to travel the world first. Because they feel that getting married and having family, a family, you know, with children will sort of buck them down, tie them down. So they want to travel and explore and see the world. <coughs> and the sad thing is, most people who travel do not travel to learn lessons from what they see. They just travel because they want it to look good. Well, I've been there and done that. But in the Islamic perspective, Allah has encouraged us to travel in the land, but for a different objective. In Surah Al-Hajj, Allah says, Afalam yasiru fil ardi. Do they not travel in the land? But for what objective? فَتَقُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا but have hearts with which they can understand and ears with which they hear the lesson and the message. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Allah says, for surely it's not the eyes, the physical eyes that become blind, but it's the hearts in the breasts that become blind. So he said, O group of young men, if you can afford to, get married. So again, affordability is important, right? The young brother needs to think about the financial responsibility that he has, <coughs> excuse me, for his family. And he needs to plan accordingly. The Prophet ﷺ explained why 
marriage for the young person who can afford to and is ready is the best thing. He said, فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ Because it is the best thing. أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ It is the best thing to help you lower your gaze. Your eyes would not roam as you walk the streets. And you know, we're into the summertime, so mashallah, people are taking off, they're undressing. Every time the temperature goes up a little bit, the clothing comes up. And it's very hard not to see. The Prophet says, you get married though, it will help you to control that urge and that desire to look around. أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ It will help you the most in lowering your gaze. وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ And it's the best way of protecting yourself from sin. Literally, the Prophet says, it will protect your private part. Meaning, it will protect you from committing sin, the sin of zina. Because now you have a halal way and means of fulfilling this desire, which Allah, by the way, created. But what if a person is not able to, to, to get married? The Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ If a person is not able to get married, فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Let him fast. فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَابٌ For the fasting is that means of helping him or her control the desire. So one of the benefits or virtues of fasting in general is that it is an effective method and means of control of the sexual desire. Fasting itself also is a shield. This is another virtue. It's a shield. Whether you're fasting in Ramadan or out of Ramadan, it's a shield. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said, As-Suyamu Junna. It's a shield. Ibn al-Arabi, as Ibn Hajar mentions in Fath al-Bari, he explains how fasting is a shield. And he said that fasting is a shield because when a person is fasting, that person should make a conscious effort to avoid engaging in sinful actions and behavior. You know, ordinarily, brothers and sisters, we should avoid evil. But while fasting, we should make even a greater effort to avoid sinful behavior. So he said, Ibn al-Arabi, he said that when a person is fasting, because he or she is more conscious or should be more <coughs> conscious of Allah and makes a conscious effort to avoid sinful behaviors, then that person will now be able to resist the shahawat, the desires. And since the hellfire is surrounded by what? By, sh by shahawat. The hellfire is surrounded with desires, these desires that people feel and experience. So fasting prevents a person from indulging in the desires and the desires are uh, uh, surround the hellfire and therefore it's a shield from the hellfire. Because the way to the hellfire is following desires. So if a person can resist the desires, then effectively that person is avoiding the things that will lead to the hellfire. Ibn Hajar also mentioned that fasting is a shield in the sense that it helps to shield a person from committing sins in the first place. Because in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, if while fasting a person were to fight with you, tell them, inni sa'im, I am fasting. The statement, right, saying to the person, I am fasting, what does it really do for the individual? What it does is, it tells the other person, look, I am fasting. And fasting is the shield that will protect me and prevent me from behaving in an in unbecoming manner as you are behaving. So the Prophet says, you tell that person who is trying to fight with you, Inni sa'im, I am fasting. Meaning, I'm not going to engage with you here and behave like you. Quarrel and fighting and whatever else. So fasting is a shield from unbecoming behavior. Fasting is also a means of forgiveness of our sins. In fact, fasting in Ramadan in particular, 
is an excellent means of forgiveness of our sins. The Prophet ﷺ said in the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincere devotion, إِيمَانًا with sincere devotion, وَاحْتِسَابًا hoping for a reward only from Allah, all his or her previous sins will be forgiven. Fasting, another virtue of fasting in general is it is an act of worship in which Allah, about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith Qudsi in Sahih al-Bukhari as well, Allah the Exalted said that all the actions that a human being does are for himself except fasting. It is for me and I will reward it. Now what's interesting here is that as Muslims we understand that everything we do should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why in this hadith Allah the Exalted specializes fasting and says, look, everything else is for himself except fasting. Well, Ibn Hajar has, has commented on this as well, mashallah. And he said that there are two reasons for this. One, fasting is an ibadah in which a person deprives himself or herself from following desires. You're giving up pleasures. While in the other ibadat, this is not the case. You're not depriving yourself from pleasures. Because while fasting, we're not eating and drinking. Two most common desires. That's why many non-Muslims find it hard to understand the concept of fasting. How do you people fast the whole day and you don't eat and drink? And of course, while fasting, we're, we're also supposed to abstain from sexual activity, in particular sexual relations with the spouse. And that of course is <coughs> indulgence in, in desires. So he said that fasting is an ibadah that dictates that the individual, in order to perform this ibadah properly and correctly, he or she has to deprive himself of indulgence in certain things that are pleasurable. And, and, and this is the nature of human beings, to indulge in that which is pleasurable. If an activity brings you pain, you don't in, 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 in engage in it. You want to avoid it. And the other reason for Allah the Exalted to make special mention of fasting, saying that it is for me and I will reward it, is Ibn Hajr says, Rahimahullah, that fasting is an ibadah in which showing off is very difficult. Whereas with the other ibadah, it's very easy to show off. In fact, somebody can see you easily. If you pray, people can see you. You recite the Quran, someone can see you. You give in charity, people can see you. You go for hajj, mashallah, people often go to the airport to, to bid farewell to the judge. But with fasting, nobody knows. You have to go out of your way to sell somebody, look, I'm fasting. And so because in this ibadah, it's very, very difficult to show off as opposed to the other types of worship and ibadah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singles out. In other words, you see, when a person fasts, hopefully the person has no other ulterior motive than to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because no one can look at you and tell you're fasting. They will have to be informed. So most likely, when a person fasts, he or she is being sincere. And for this reason, Allah says, it is for me, and I will reward. Now, there are other uh, virtues of Ramadan in particular, and fasting in Ramadan, but inshallah, we're out of time today, but we'll continue, and hopefully by the time Ramadan comes, we'll have a better picture of the tremendous grace and blessings and mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has afforded us in the month of Ramadan. I know some people may look at it as you know, here we go for the next month, we have to avoid eating or drinking and the days are long and the temperatures might be hot, it will be difficult. But this is a tremendous opportunity, brothers and sisters, for us to acquire and achieve many, many blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is doing this out of, you know, benevolence and compassion for you and I, His, his servants. So... Once we understand these things, then inshallah, as we fast in Ramadan, we can strive with the awareness 
we can strive to achieve these things so that when Ramadan ends, hopefully we would have achieved all these great blessings as opposed to simply, you know, going through hunger and thirst every day for 29 or 30 days. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand this message He has revealed for mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make fasting not only easy for us in this Ramadan, but easy for us and all Muslims and also may He accept it from us. And may He guide us to fast in a way and a manner that is pleasing to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to nurture a higher consciousness and awareness of Him in our hearts as we fast in this Ramadan. So that when Ramadan ends, we will continue to be conscious and, and, and mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته